than you have been because as much as I've known you, there has always been a bit of struggle. Now here's Ted with the sports. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Moving along. Um, <laughs> and this is the intro you were looking for. Uh, yeah, so we're going to bring in my guest, uh, Dr. Brian King, who I'm sure is going, oh, thanks, thanks. For, uh, you know, nothing like coming uh, into a show with a eulogy. Hey, that's I'm just glad you got my name right this time. <laughs> uh, that's all. <laughs> that's probably, that's not the worst intro I've ever had, I'll be honest. <laughs> well, look, I can, I can get your name uh, right all the time because uh, it's the same as mine, and you spell that's it true. the right way. We do. So, yeah. We do. Spell it with the I. Yeah. Fuck those Y people. Those Y yeah. fuckers can, uh, heathens, one yeah. and all, I say. But, you know, I was, uh, you know, very touching uh words about your friend passing friend i uh, you know i mean uh, yeah things happen of course uh, you take your time to address it you know who am i i'm just a comedian just, you know what i mean like a uh let's <laughs> let's you know what you yes. said something who am i i'm just a comedian right you know what um let's talk about that for a second <laughs> well when i pass i definitely hope that people are out there saying what uh, what a great political conversation this i was <laughs> i really <laughs> i want that happening uh now I, I want people like yeah you know I love talking politics with Dr. Brian that was good, but uh, but here's the whole thing the idea that, I mean I'm a comedian also, yeah. but the idea that we're oh, just a comedian, and I don't I don't actually I don't agree with that that idea that uh, a comedian is, um, I don't know somehow less than something else. Oh yeah, just yeah, a comedian. No, I think uh, just well I w I would use the same phrase. Uh, I'm a very humble guy. I would use the same phrase as if I said I'm just a president of the United States. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? Or I'm, I'm just uh, the overlord of a, of a small cult. You know, I would, uh, it's just a phrasing, you know, it's All a right. humility, actually. I mean, comedians, you know, are essential. <laughs> no, we're so not. We're so not no, necessary. No, actually, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree with that. In fact, I would say that comedians are, in fact, incredibly essential. And now more than ever, I think that, uh, Comedians and observations that we make and judgment calls that we make and simply to throw out ideas yeah. to hopefully well, make people think, yeah, I think yeah. is, is more valuable now than ever. I, I also, too, think that every every time I'm out in the real world and I encounter some, uh, you know, like like I, I was at gross grocery shopping the other day, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm, I got my basket, you know, well, uh, there's this woman and her friend or a relative, whatever, they're shopping, they're wearing, we're passing each other in the aisle. One of them points at a type of cereal and says, hey, look, this is something that Joey would eat. The other one ignores it, right? So she repeats it, says, hey, look, Joey would eat this. And the other one looks and says, and laughs, you know, like an awkward laugh. Mm -hmm. And uh, and at that moment, I realized, yes, the world does need comedians. Because other people don't know how to make fucking jokes. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> like I don't know who Joey is. I don't know what kind of cereal he's eating. But that was obviously not a funny joke. And so she and and, and I was like, yeah, this is why we need comedians because other people don't know how to entertain themselves. You know, no, and but, com and comedians are there to point out the. Um the banality and the weirdness and the craziness that is this world. <laughs> That's true. Like cereal. Yeah. Yes. I, uh, and also, I was also touched uh, by something you said in your, uh, uh, in your, you know, your, your talk about your friend too. And that is that, uh, uh, you know, he was, he was discovered cause he didn't go into work for a couple of days. Yeah. And I started to think about that. You know, I don't have a job. Uh, and uh, <laughs> like, 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 if I die, and nobody's gonna find me until I'm fucking decayed into my bed springs. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's funny because I was thinking, yeah, nobody will know that Brian's not there because uh, he didn't show up to the open mic. That's right. <laughs> I was like, wait, nobody's going to miss me. You know, and I was like, wait a minute, what the hell happened? That guy Brian's not here. All right, life moves on. Uh, <laughs> nobody's going to come home and check on me. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't show for the open mic. Oh, that's really, really sad. Can I get five? Time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sort of thing. That's, uh, you know, that's, I guess, if there's ever a reason uh, to have a job. 
uh, that would be uh, that would be one of them. That, you know? Yeah, that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm employed, so I can be discovered upon <laughs> my death. If I die, somebody's going to come knocking. You know? and, 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 but the great thing is that upper management would say, "Well, those are yeah. that's one of the benefits." Those, I'd those, say you, yes. you know you put your email on like auto reply. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. you, you prepay your rent for a few months you know <laughs> nobody will ever come looking for you it's a sad world we live in <laughs> so what have you been up to i mean for for the last year you've been out there on the road yet again I dr have. brian king being badass right, motherfucker right. uh, yeah yeah no i just got back i just got back i was uh I, i've been i've officially been in california now for uh two and a half weeks you mm -hmm. know i uh, I left in January. We're in July now, so I was gone for like a good five and a half, six months. Uh, and uh, it's so good to be back. I, 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 yeah. I do like it here. I miss it, but uh, I, I, I earn my money on the road. Yeah, you know, that's where I, that's where I have to be uh, to, to get a paycheck. So uh, it's like a, you know, I love it here, but when I'm here, I'm not working. You know, it's kind of it's right. a tough thing. Because uh, this town does not necessarily it, it fosters work. It just doesn't foster work that pays. <laughs> yeah, there's no pay for the work here. Right. Uh, but no, I, 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 I really do enjoy it here. Thank you so much for your slave labor. It's wonderful. I was in, uh, uh, where was I? I was all over the Northeast. Uh, I went to, and, you know, okay, so Brian, uh, I, you know, I've traveled quite a bit, toured mm -hmm. a lot, right? Well, up until this year, up until May, actually, I had, I had toured and visited uh, 48 of our 50 states. You know? Wow. I was missing two. And they're not the two that most people would assume. You know, most people assume Alaska and Hawaii. No, those are fucking states that I was a hurry to get to. I went to those as fast as I could. The two that were missing, the last two on my list, were New Hampshire and Maine. Uh, the uh, the most boring states, I think, uh, in our entire country. Uh, so I, I had this tour. Tour ended in Connecticut. And... And I decided, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to take like a couple extra weeks and, and just travel all over New Hampshire and Maine, mm -hmm. finish off the U.S. map, you know. I uh, did that, made like a sort of a, a personal bucket list achievement, you know, if you will. I got that. I still tell you, though, man, those are boring as shit states. I mean, there's a, <laughs> there's a reason why they were the last places for me to visit, you know. Uh, but uh, and then I, I ducked into uh, Canada for a little while. You know, went to Quebec, uh, Montreal, just to make the trip a little bit more worth it. Uh, and then flew back here, and I've been here a couple weeks. You know, but uh, I was everywhere, man. I was all over the Northeast for uh, for a good couple of months. Uh, I was all over the South for another couple of months. Mardi Gras was part of that. Okay. Oh no, Mardi Gras! Yeah, it sucks Horrible. when you have to tour through Mardi Gras. Yeah, you right. Know? That's the worst. Like, Wait a minute. So I have to go through to Party Central? Yeah. yeah oh yeah. no. I just yeah. I can I I don't know. Can I, I need to sit back? It was it, 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 it's it's a tough job. Somebody's got to do it. Really. <laughs> yes. It's, uh, yeah. No. I was uh, I, I was lucky enough to be able to arrange my schedule so that I had gigs all through Mississippi, Louisiana, and those aren't necessarily great gigs, but it, it was close. You know, put me in New Orleans for Mardi mm -hmm. Gras. Uh, I had an amazing time. So, uh, yeah. No. So I, what was her name? Uh, there were several hers, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, I forgot some of their names. No, it's a uh, uh, Mardi Gras. Is just a, it's a it's a good time. I used to live in New Orleans. Uh, yeah. I uh, I try to go every year. Uh, I missed the New Orleans Mardi Gras for the last few years in mm -hmm. a row because I was working or touring or broke, uh, and uh, and so last year I missed it because of work and touring and stuff. And so I decided to uh, since I was going to miss New Orleans. I went to San Diego because San Diego has, you know, like the the biggest Mardi Gras on the West Coast. Do you think? Yeah. And, and, not and, only uh, do I need to go to uh, Mardi Gras in New New Orleans, apparently I also need to go to Mardi Gras in uh, San Diego. Yeah, you can actually take yeah. that one off your list because uh, I went last year and it was awful. <laughs> was it? <laughs> it was. A, it, was a, it was. It was so bad that I was like, okay, next year I'm not missing. New Orleans, and so it's, I, I, I just like I can't do it again. I can't put myself through that pain, uh, you know. Because every year, if I if I don't go, I'm just like fuck. There's so much cool stuff going on in the other part of the country, and I'm not there, you know. Even you know, so, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I could be doing something way better, right? Uh, and so that this this year, I was like, there's no way I'm missing it. So I put it in my schedule, worked it out, went to New Orleans. It was you know, it was a, it was a good good tour, man. Let me tell you. 
So when you're so the events that you're doing because it's it's not uh, I mean certainly you're you're working in stand up gigs, mm -hmm. uh, but you're also doing other uh, other kinds of uh, presentations. What is that? Let's yep. talk about that. So I I tour the country uh, giving these seminars. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a I'm a psychologist as well as a comedian. That's what so that's why he introduced me as Doctor Brian. It's true. King. Now, in fact, uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that we're still friends and you're not going, you're a fucking nut job, yeah. dude. Yeah, man. dude, all, all my friends are nut jobs. Uh, you know, like sane, sane people are boring, all right? Uh, but I was a... All uh, the best freaks are here. Yeah, but I was... no. I, 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 so I, I figured out a way uh, a while ago to uh, combine psychology and comedy and kind of get paid for it. And I do these seminars. Mm -hmm. We market me as a, as a funny psychologist or a... Or a comedian that has a PhD, from depending on your point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been touring the country talking about happiness, which is a uh, which is a fun topic to talk about. I, I I tell people how to be happy. I'm a happy person, you know. So I clearly, give them a, I no, give them a good example. Uh, no, in fact, know? actually, one of the things that always admit that that I I always love hanging out with and talking with you, whether whether it's in person. I mean, in person is always great, but even if we're online or something. There, there is always a level. There's a joy about you. There is, oh, and thanks. it's it's a it's a wonderful, great thing. And, and and I don't bump into that a lot at all. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you are as joyous a person as you clearly are um, is a, it's a great thing. Yeah. No, I I've, I I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm not uh, dispositionally. I'm not the happiest person I've ever known. You know what I mean? I've, <laughs> uh, I know people who are just bubbly and optimistic and positive, like all the fucking time. You know, I have my mm -hmm. moments where, you know, shit happens. I feel bad about it, but I'm usually a really, um, uh, happy, relaxed guy, stress-free, you know, that kind of stuff. All sure. the things that I talk about on my tour, I don't take life too seriously. And I've always been, uh, really focused on pursuing my own happiness and, and, uh, doing the things that make me happy. Um, you know, I, I've, uh, that's how I've lived my life. And now, uh, uh, in, in addition to that, now I'm pretty well versed in the psychological literature that, that talks about happiness. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and the thing is, is, you know, I'm a psychologist, but, uh, I've only recently started studying happiness as a, as a topic in psychology. And I was really surprised to learn that I had been doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> I have been... I've been doing it right the whole time. And it's like, uh, you know, they, they say, hey, you want to be happy, be optimistic. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so when you found that out, was like, did you do like a victor dance? Yeah. Like, well, yeah. And, and like, then we, you want to be, you want to be happy, uh, reduce stress in your life. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I, I had already, you know, I had already been doing uh, all the things that, that psychologists have been showing uh, empirically and make people happy. So. I tour the country, tell, uh, which touring the country makes me really happy. Uh, sure. Going from city to city, uh, meeting new people, uh, you know, having a good time. I make people laugh, you know, and all that stuff. It's a, It's been a good deal. Uh, I'm uh, I'm working on a new one, though. Yeah. And this one, I'm actually, although the, although it sounds like it'd be much more fun, I'm actually struggling with it. It's, uh, it's a seminar about laughter. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, it's like laughter and... and uh, and health, you know, like how how it's good to laugh, and like what the the health benefits of laughter, sure. things like that, right? Laughter is yeah. the best medicine. I don't know why, but I'm really it's 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 I'm having a hard time writing it. Uh, hmm. It's a it's a, you know I think um uh, I think I think the problem is is that uh, there's this I've already told you everything I know sure. about laughter and health. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Laughter makes you healthy. And, so uh, how do I turn that into like a several hour seminar? That's what I'm that's that's what I'm wrestling with. Yeah, you know? Digging deeper. Yeah. What does it, that actually mean? What is it? Uh, OK, so laughter makes you healthier. Right. Why? It is the best medicine. It is the best. It, it is the best medicine. It's really good medicine uh, and cheap. So cheap. Uh, no, in fact, uh, it's know? a great thing. If, if I'm in a if a, uh, I'm in a bedroom with a woman and my pants you know, come down and she laughs and they go, you don't realize I'm saving you right it's now. It's not really Viagra. Yeah, it's, no. a, it's a different, <laughs> it's not going to help that way. <laughs> Laughter is the opposite of the blue pill. Uh, but it is good medicine, though. It, really it is. is. Have you ever noticed that uh, uh, Viagra and a box from Tiffany's have almost exactly the same color? Nice. I never noticed that, it's, but that's a good association. It's a fact. Yeah. And they achieve the same end result. Uh, okay. Yeah. What if you put a uh, pill in a Tiffany's box? 
<laughs> that's an engagement. <laughs> I think I, that's that that's that's uh, maybe in the gay community. Yeah. Uh, that's where that would work. <laughs> oh man! But yeah, I had a good tour. Uh, I haven't done shit since I got back. Yeah, I, I came back. Uh, I was here for a day. I immediately went up to San Francisco and fooled around. Uh, <laughs> I do that too, I, although I call it seeing my family. <laughs> <laughs> If I had a family, you know, see, then again, it's like if I were to die in my department, nobody would know. Yeah. You know? Oh, I, 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 I'd know. People would be like, uh, hey, well, you know what? Brian hasn't posted on Facebook in, in over an hour. Let's go check on him. <laughs> That's the only way people would have any clue is if I didn't tweet. Well, so then keep tweeting. <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, so you need to tweet at uh, uh, 140 tweets per minute. Tweeting to stay alive. <laughs> yes. That's what it is. I'm de- Look, people are like, Toads, you're on Facebook all the time. How else are my parents supposed to know I'm still breathing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I tweet, therefore I am. That's right. It's the updated Descartes. <laughs> exactly. What it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's the cogito for the modern times. It's the e-cogito. I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Craziness. So that's me, man. That's me. Um, uh, All right, so I, I've got I've got to ask you. Um, you had posted something when you were on the road, mm-hmm. and um, I don't ask it to um, to embarrass you, but I figure there's got to be a story behind. I, there was something that you had posted that you were doing a show, and somehow you got sick and you threw up in front of the <laughs> audience. Oh man, I threw up in front of three hundred people. <laughs> what happened? I uh, uh, I okay, well. I got a stomach bug first. Uh, I don't know if it's like a virus or whatever. I don't have health insurance, you know. But I got a <laughs> no diagnosis, just yeah. an after effect. Yeah, I, you know, I ate Taco Bell the day before. I don't know. Maybe it had something to do with it, you know, or maybe it was like the three pounds of fudge. Don't have yeah. the gordita. You know, when you buy like a, a thing of fudge, it comes in like a pound, and then yeah. if you buy two pounds, you get a third pound for free, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe you drive in across uh, Newport, Rhode Island. And you guys nothing else to do, so you just like smacking on fudge as you're driving across the state of Rhode Island, you know. And just maybe it's like sits in the sun for an hour while you're inside getting a beer. <laughs> I don't, who knows, you know. All I'm saying is I woke up really sick that morning, and uh, and I have yeah my my my, my speaking gigs. These are, are these pre booked things, and so uh, there's like 200, 300 people that all. Uh, you know, it took time out of their lives, you know, mm-hmm. to come see me talk for an hour, for a day. And it's a day long thing, too. It's a full day seminar and stuff. Uh, people do it for work credit. They do it for a variety of different reasons, you know, but they come to see me for six hours. Uh, I woke up sick and uh, and I puked uh, twice that morning. I never, ever canceled a speaking gig ever. Uh, but I think you're a pro. Yeah, I fi- I've, I've talked with bronchitis. Twice, you know what I mean, or two, through two seasons. Uh, never, never cancel speaking gig. But I thought, you know what, this might be the one to cancel. You know? <laughs> so I, uh, I called up everybody I needed to talk to and stuff. I, I um, uh, made, I, I told them I wanted to cancel and all that. And then, uh, and then I felt guilty about it because there's like literally like hundreds of people waiting to to hear what I have to say. And even if they didn't care what I had to say. Uh, they a lot of them were there for work reasons and stuff. And if, right. if I were to cancel, then they got to go back to work or do you know, they're not going to get whatever they came for. So I was like, All right, I'm gonna give it a shot. You know, I could move things around, I could play more videos, whatever. I could come out and just kind of kind of wing it. And uh, I came out and I was, I, I told everybody, I was first of all, I'm, I'm sick and I tried to cancel, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna push through, I'm gonna see if we could do it. And I, I came out no energy. I'm like sitting on the stool, you know. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm I'm just like kind of walking through it, uh, trying to be, uh, you know, like not put a lot of stress in my throat or my stomach or anything, right. you know. And an hour in, uh, I just fucking heave. Uh, I had a, <laughs> I had my the body assistant. said, "Sorry, yeah. time's up. We're done." Oh, so here's the thing. I, I I said, okay. I told my assistant, look, make sure there's a bucket. <laughs> on the stage you know like just in case you know and i literally he I, I grabbed that bucket just heaved into it projectily and right in front of like 200 people you know oh <laughs> and, and then i was just like oh i'm still mic'd while i'm while because i got, I got <laughs> no. one of those lab mics 
So I'm, oh. I'm like heaving. They're hearing it on the mic, you know. And then I, I grab the bucket and I just run for like an exit door because I don't. I mean, if I'm gonna throw up, fine. I don't want to throw up in front of right these these people, you know. I'm not running an ad <laughs> for. So I uh, I ran for this exit door. The exit door turned out to be a closet door that was locked, and I'm heaving <laughs> no. again. Uh, and then I like I go for this other door. It's open, so I go outside, dry heaving, you know, like getting all that last stuff out. Yep. And then suddenly I realize I'm still on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> the entire time I'm going like, ah, oh, fuck, oh fuck, I can't believe it. You know, I was, I was trying, you know, and I was, oh shit, microphone's on. You know, it's like <laughs> it's just one of those things. Uh, so I got my composure, came back in. I said, "Okay, obviously, I'm canceling." <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually, I'm really curious. How did the crowd respond to that? They uh, were so supportive of me. Yeah, <laughs> they I would really hope. were. They really were. They because you know they're there for a combination of reasons. Some of them are there because they really want to hear me, you know, and they really mm. want to hear what I have to say, be happy, you know, all that stuff. It's a happiness seminar, you know. Some of them are there because they're obligated by work, you know. Uh, uh, but whatever the reason they're there, they're they were they're 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 on my side, you know. It's mm -hmm. not like it's not like they all. It's not like anybody got pissed, you know. And, well, I came all the way out of here and you just threw up, you know. I, I didn't get any of that. What did you do? Go getting sick? You yeah, amateur. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. You know, I've heard uh, uh, I've heard things like you know singers you know peeing on stage, you know, like, like yeah. Fergie, actually, yeah, your guy's pulling up a video, I know, and uh, 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 in that video, I reference uh, Fergie actually peed her pants uh, in one of the Black Black Eyed Peas shows, you know? That's because she realized exactly how bad she really yeah. is. But it was um, it, it was more like she had to pee uh, so bad, but, like, she couldn't stop the show, you know, to go take a, take a leak, so, I mean, it just came out in her pants, and, like, it was people, photos all over the internet of Fergie pissing her pants. Shit happens, you know. Shit happens, and yeah. he's trying to power through it. You know, I uh, uh, I tried really hard uh, to do that. You know, it, it was my first time, like I said, uh, attempting to cancel a gig. I should have just canceled it and stuck with my cancelization, but I tried. You know, I tried. I, I tried to. I tried to do it. You, you went. You, no, I mean, I I think your 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 idea was to. I'm gonna be the pro. Yeah. I'm gonna be a professional. My. It, it I was, will power through it. I'll was, find a way through it, and it's like, well, it, yeah, sometimes it's like, your it body doesn't work. Yeah, yeah your body yeah. doesn't work. Every, I, that was the second to the last day of my tour, too. So it was it was unfortunate that I had to end on a low note. You know, usually I come off the end of the tour and I'm just banging. I'm just like, whoa, yeah. it's you know. But I came off of that tour going, oh, thank God it's over. <laughs> you know. So how does all that? St um, okay, so I mean, you're doing. I mean, so you're out on the road. You do these. You do these show. These talks these you know for corporate events how does that inform and affect uh your stand-up and when you're out on the road doing mm -hmm. those things do you end up going to st to clubs I do, in this I do. yeah yeah i, I book hope a, so i book yeah. a lot of club gigs that coincide with my speaking tour uh or try to you know not every city has a comedy club you know no not every which city, is too bad yeah i mean that so it, it's not always possible, but uh, most of the major places uh, I can get spots. And mm -hmm. I and I also, you know, the nice thing about me is that uh, comedy clubs don't have to worry about uh, uh, putting me up. Yeah, you know, I don't have to. I don't. I don't have to stay in the comedy condo or the. Right. You know, they don't have to put me up in anything. So like, I, I'm 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 free essentially to. You're already there. You yeah. can drop in. You can uh, you can land the entertainment, exactly. and you will. It'll be a great show. You bring something good, and boom, I'm out of there. There's no muss, no fuss, no nothing. Exactly right. Like but I'm, can I have some wings? Yeah. So uh, and I'm happy to to get payment when they when they offer it but honestly it's like i just i, I just want to look for a spot i just want to get a spot mm -hmm. so i'm pretty uh, i'm pretty affordable also i can i if i if we plan it right uh I'm, I'm really good for the clubs because uh after i knock out a day gig in a city those people want to come to see me perform right. that night you know what i mean uh not everybody that comes to my lectures is local uh but you know I, you figure i got 300 people in a room i'm making them laugh all day and i say hey and then come see me tonight at such and such you know chuckle barn you know right. uh about 30 of those people or 40 of those people are going to come yeah, out i was to gonna say barn. i mean if you got an audience of 300 of 10 percent yeah. i mean a whopping 10 percent, which is not a lot yeah if 10 percent of them show up um, that's at least a, a quarter of the club in all likelihood. So it, it, yeah. it works out. And, uh, and there, there are some cities where I get a lot more, uh, than, uh, attention than others, you know, 
uh, for whatever reason, uh, there's uh, there's some cities that I just know more people, like mm -hmm. you know, bookers and stuff. I go to New Orleans. I get a I get a full, you know, couple of weeks, uh, you know, of of comedy gigs because I know a lot of bookers down there. I know the shows. You know, I uh, I headlined uh, a whole bunch of shows while I was in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. You know, and I got a lot of love for New Orleans, and and I do really well with those crowds. But then I go to like New York City. Uh, and you know what? Fuck New York City. <laughs> you know I mean? Like I, I, I love New York City. Like I'm from there originally, but holy shit, it's such a hard comedy scene. You know, I, uh, I roll in. Of course, as a, as an out of towner, it's like it's tough for me to get stage time here and there. Uh -huh. You know, it's like even with the advantages I just shared, those don't really matter in New York because uh, nobody that attended my seminar is going to come to that show that night. You know, it's like and if a, they do, they're just fucking pissed. Yeah. Just because they're from New York. <laughs> exactly. They're all mad. because I got no reason to be angry, yeah. but hey, I'm in fucking New York City, so I'm pissed off. And they're all Fuck like, you. They're all like B and tears, you know. With the right. It's a, it's, it's a, you know, it's like I, you know, there's just some places that it's tougher to, to work than others, mm -hmm. you know. And New York is hella competitive, you know. I mean, like, uh, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you're, you're a comic from L.A.? Oh, yeah, we got a thousand of you guys that moved here last month. You know, a story is full of them, you know. So, yeah. Uh, you know, it is, and it is what it is. But yeah, uh, New Orleans, uh, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, man, they get ample stage time. You know, it's a, it's fun. I, I worked in a, I did a comedy festival. While I was on the road, the Cape Fear Comedy Festival. Mm -hmm. That was part of my schedule. That was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. So with Cape Fear, do you have to like uh, do pull ups with a tattoo on your back and? and... <laughs> rape somebody's daughter I, or something and I, I i made so many jokes that reference that movie and nobody got them uh, <laughs> i was like like really it's not that old of a movie uh you know now so we call it my, my opening joke at a festival right it's like first of all it's cape fear comedy festival there's cape fear of this cape fear of that you know wilmington north carolina a lot of shit's named after cape fear you know it's the, the river word fear is in the fucking I know, title I know. Ah! But it's the name of that river. And so I kick off like, wow, you know, you guys have all this stuff named named, named Cape Fear. You guys must be like big De Niro fans in this, uh, you know. And uh, silence, you know, <laughs> kind of like my reception here. Uh, but, there is a, uh, but yeah, no, it's a, it's a it's it's such a common name out there. You right. Know? My parents live on the Cape Fear. You know? Really? Yeah, they live, uh, they so live up the river, up the river from from Wilmington. Why is it called the Cape Fear? Do you know? Because it made a hell of a movie title. No, I really Perfect. don't know. I no idea where that name came from, but it's awesome, and I can't believe it took so long for somebody to make a movie with that title. Because that's you know. Well, I remember it was a remake. That's true. Yeah, that's true. But even then, I feel like the first movie made should have been Cape Fear. You know what I mean? It's that yeah. good of a title. You know. Like the minute they could put sound in movies, it's like I got, Cape Fear. I, let me pitch something. It's called Cape Fear. You know, it's based okay, on. Cool. Yeah, it's just a great name. Uh, Cape, scare the shit out of me. No, not quite as a Cape Fear. Yes, please. Yeah, like yeah. There, are, there are some place names that just fit really well with like movies or bands. So like Kansas. You know what I mean? Kansas. Right. That's a great name for a band. Why? You know what I mean? Like why? Or why the fuck did it take so long for somebody to pick that name up? You know? Because uh, it takes a while to write um, "Carry On Our Wayward Son." That's such a good song. It's though. amazing. Uh, Are you kidding? Oh my god! <laughs> dunk, 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 dunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's and the, and the, the other one that they have, uh, "Dust, Dust in, the in the Wind." Yeah. yeah, that that right there. That's just like that's my mantra. Uh, you know, when it, yeah, that's such, but you know, you think about the name Kansas and like the imagery that pops into your head associated with that. You know, it has nothing to do with the music. It has everything to do with everything you associate with Kansas. It's like wide open spaces flowing grain you know like mm -hmm. like wagons and and you know like and and that yeah i want to listen to that visual you know what i mean yeah like, uh, like it's it's weird that it took so long for somebody to come up with that name cape fear same thing i don't have to know shit about your movie if you're gonna call it cape fear that's that's i'm going yeah, my main thought, my, my immediate thought is whatever it is, it's going to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> and How if you're going to name your comedy festival after Cape Fear, yeah. well, then I'm well, probably... Something. <laughs> yeah. Every joke is followed with... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Counselor. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> right? These are such dated references. <laughs> There's people like, what are they talking about? The counselor. What What's he mean? Well, he did say he was a psychologist. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, I, all right, so of of the places that you have traveled, and you what I think what you uh, you've hit uh, forty eight of our fifty. No, I've been. That was the point of saying I went to New Hampshire and Maine. 
Those are the last two. Really? Yeah, I've gotten all 50. Yeah. Wow. All right, so uh, favorite, favorite state? <laughs> California. Yeah. Without question. California is the most interesting, diverse, incredibly uh, awesome state in our entire country. Least favorite state? Uh, that's going to be uh, either Nebraska or North Dakota. And actually, n- North Dakota. North Dakota. Why? So boring. So <laughs> boring. Uh, there's, uh, you know, South Dakota ha- is is kind of boring, but there's some nice natural, you know, features, you know, that Mount Rushmore is there, the sure. Badlands, you know. Um, uh, Sioux City is a decent town, you know, Rapid uh, Rapid Falls, is it? Rapid, I don't know, Rapid sure. City, Rapid Falls. Well, I, I get confused. Uh, but it's, it's a decent, a Sturgis. Sturgis is South Dakota. That Sturgis right there justifies that place as a state. You know, and okay. Deadwood, you know, Deadwood too. Go to North Dakota. <laughs> Deadwood, where do you live? I, I live in Deadwood. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, how's I went your to, pulse? I went to Deadwood. I was willing, I was right there. I was willing to buy property, man. I was like, this place is awesome. Uh, North Dakota, not a damn thing redeeming about it. You know, <laughs> Fargo, boring place. Uh, Bismarck, you know, like, oh, really? Bismarck, you know, like, I mean, it's just uh, not nothing about the nice people in North Dakota. I met some really great people there. But, so uh, are they are they like uh, the cliches of, about North Dakota from the film Fargo? The whole oh yeah yeah you betcha and all that. They kind of have that? that. They kind of have have that going. Uh, they're all white people, uh, right? So like I, I would say like you know in North the Dakotas, uh, Montana, Wyoming. Seriously, if you're I don't I don't know why white supremacists or even just just racist. You don't have to be a white supremacist to be a racist. Just a racist, you know? Right. If like if you hate on minorities, or you hate on black people. Fucking move to the Dakotas, like, like, like. I don't you're know why. Safe. I don't know why. I don't know why you're living in Alabama. You know what I mean? You're surrounded by black people in Alabama. You know what I mean? Like, you can't, get, you can't not see a black person. And now you want to, you, you really hate black people. Fucking move to North Dakota. You know, <laughs> you're in a safe zone. <laughs> yeah, I think that, and honestly, and that they're not racist people. Like, I, I didn't encounter racism because mm-hmm. I'm white. But uh, <laughs> but they don't seem like racist people. All I'm saying is that uh, if you don't like uh, so, you know uh, people that are non-whites, you should move to the place where there aren't any, uh, and that's North Dakota. Uh, they're, they're not a single one. Or Canada. Or Canada. Well, Canada parts of Canada. Uh, but I would say, uh, yeah, no, and, and I wasn't. Uh, so speaking of states I didn't like, uh, I wasn't so fond of New Hampshire either. Really? Yeah, why? It's just uh, another boring place. Uh, in fact, most of New England's kind of boring, although. You know, a lot of the people that that uh, I met some great people. That's you know, a lot of my followers and stuff are from that part of the country. But honestly, it's like it's a suburb of New York. You know, <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's five states that New are all Hampshire a suburb of New York. A suburb of New York. <laughs> it really is, man. It's where An New, entire state. New Yorkers yeah. go there for the weekend to get away from it all. You know, these people that live in New Hampshire and Connecticut and stuff, they commute them to, to New York for jobs. You know what I mean? It's like a it's pretty funny. It's a, it's crazy. Uh, now I remember. In fact, I'd been, uh, um, God, years back. I had been uh, working at a company, and I, and I did, I did uh, two weeks of training in in beautiful Pensac in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and every night I would drive uh, up the Turnpike to go to Manhattan. Yeah. And it'd be driving through New Jersey. Going, I mean, I I I know that it's called the Garden State. But I would describe it as the what's that smell state. <laughs> because as you drive up the turnpike, one minute it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's green, and it's luscious. And, and suddenly there's industry, and it's mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, what it, it, it was uh, one minute my nose was speaking floral, and now it's speaking um, noxious gas. <laughs> yeah, they have a very interesting flower. The state flower of New Jersey is the smokestack. It's uh, <laughs> it's really right. Hey, it's like the Garden State, like of all the things to call New Jersey. I mean, it clearly, yeah. it, you know, it got that nickname before it was heavily industrial, or did it? I don't know. Yeah, anything where's about the, the garden? I don't know anything about the history of New Jersey. I do know that uh, if your state, uh, well, you know, here's the thing. I, I had this debate recently. So New York, we're familiar, right? Yeah. New York has these five boroughs. Right. One of them is Staten Island. Yeah, and Staten Island is a place that culturally uh, isn't a lot like the rest of New York City. Uh, it's um, uh, geographically, it's not even located near the other boroughs. It's actually lo- no located like it's more like part of Jersey, you know? Right. 
And they've, they've, they, the, the, the citizens of Staten Island have even voted several times to secede from New York City. Uh, like, they want to be a separate entity. You know, they don't want to be part of New York anymore. Uh, State Staten. Yeah. And so, I have, uh, you know, my, my position is, like, Staten Island should be part of Jersey. You know, and I think, you know, I, not that my opinion matters or anything, but I got into a, a conversation with people in Jersey, and they're like, oh, no, we don't want Staten Island as part of, <laughs> like, really? You don't want Staten Island? Your state's major cities are Newark, <laughs> uh, Trenton, uh, Camden, you know, Atlantic City. Like, these are shitholes. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, Staten Island would be an improvement, you know? It's a... That's the thing, and I, I think that joke really only has uh, an audience of, like, four, uh, really. <laughs> I, that's one of those regional jokes. I'm like, ah, I was killing when I was back east. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to tell that in L.A. <laughs> I mean, we don't even know where Staten Island is. What? Yeah, I'd have to bring a map first and, like, and, you know, <laughs> explain. Okay, here's Staten Island. You can see it down here next, you know. <laughs> but Jersey, my point, my point from that joke is that Jersey is not my favorite place. Like, uh, there are parts of... It's not my least favorite place, you know, but mm -hmm. uh, but there are, like, some really shitty parts of Jersey. Oh, know? yeah. Like, really. Yeah, no, there's places in Jersey where, like, you're there. It's like, uh, God, can I hit the, the accelerator pedal yeah. hard enough? Yeah. Let me get out of here. No, I'm, I'm surprised there's a speed limit on the turnpike because, uh, like, you should be able to get through that state as fast as possible. You know? No, in fact, I happen to think that it's it's merely a suggestion. Yeah, it, yeah, it's like uh, <laughs> yeah. just yeah. If he could do 65, we'd like it. But yeah. go ahead and do 90 because we understand. We know you're in a hurry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's why they don't let you pump your own gas. Because, uh, you know, it's like, uh, look, I don't even want to get out of my car in this fucking state. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. It's so weird because coming from California, I'd be on the turnpike and I'd fucking, I'd, you know, I'd pull into a gas station two o'clock in the morning after going into Manhattan because I'm an idiot that way. And somebody come out to pump my gas. And I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. yeah you yeah. do that here? That's uh, actually, uh, that is, it's a weird thing. It's also my favorite thing about I love New Jersey. It. I'm like, I don't, you know, I... Okay, here's the thing. I would love to to not pump my own gas here. You know, totally. Why don't we have that? I mean, I, I mean, we they used to be have that in, in the rest we of the used world. To, the reason we don't have it is because gas station w would so completely overcharge for it. Yeah, and but in I, Jersey, it, it's every gas station, every pump, and yet the gas is cheaper. Yeah. than uh, neighboring states. I don't understand this. I don't understand how it works. Like, how can they pay some kid? to pump gas all night at 2 a.m., and still the gas is cheaper. You know? uh, less taxes, and, yeah. uh, you know, you can hate uh, Chris Christie all you want, but um, he's apparently doing, doing something, something right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. When you, when you, when you go do the math, um, more money in your pocket doesn't necessarily equal hate. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. But, but, uh, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a good tour. I had a good time. Well, that's the idea. I always love my tours, you know. Uh, it doesn't matter where I go. Uh, I mean, my when you ask me about shitty states, my gut reaction, of course, was to say like Nebraska, because mm -hmm. that's the go-to, you know, response. But Nebraska is really actually kind of nice. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's like uh, it's kind of interesting uh, in a way. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I just love being. I just, I just love America. Uh, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big pro-America kind of guy, uh, which I think is fitting given the holiday that we're. we're uh, coming up yeah on, i mean it, it, it's um and that's actually really nice to hear because uh, we are in this we are in this weird place in in our country's evolution where um on the one hand being patriotic and loving your country is obviously a great and nice thing and it sometimes gets frowned upon as though if you're if you're going to uh, be pro-America, you must somehow have a certain uh, political ideology that goes along with it, mm -hmm. which may not actually be the case. You may just, you know what, actually kind of just, I like where I live. Yeah. I like this place. Oh, we have a fantastic country. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have, like, and, and the whole country is fantastic, too. I mean, like, I, you know, we're snobs in California. I know a lot of people uh, who, who are, uh, uh, but there's so much, uh, there's so much in the rest of the country worth visiting and getting to know, you know? Uh, granted, I have a hard time imagining living anywhere else. You know, I love sure. California. I mean, I, 
just the sight of the mountains and the ocean and, and the thought of like the things that I could do that are only like a drive away. And just like, wow, this place is amazing. And whatever her yeah. name is. Yeah. Plus, yes. Brian Crow lives in California. This is true. You know? And, you know, if there was ever a reason to live in California, it's because <laughs> I'm here. That's right. That's, yes. <laughs> um, but I, uh, yeah, I do. I love the, I love the traveling the rest of the world. I, I'm at a point now for the past, uh, I've been doing this for about four years and, I'm at a point where I'm starting to get, uh, go to places on a pretty regular basis, mm-hmm. and so I'm I'm becoming familiar, you know, with, with places that I never uh, had that kind of familiarity with. Do you, you know? go places, and it's it's like a repeat visit, and there's people going, oh, "You're back!" And yeah, yeah, yeah. People, uh, there there are people who have I haven't uh, repeated every city, you mm-hmm. know, but some cities I've I've played at uh, at least three times, and there are people yeah. that have seen me speak three times, and uh, and they they. Do you, know, you have lecture groupies, Ben? Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to go to North Dakota. To, to North Dakota. Say, How come? A, um, it just feels warm and fits just right. Yeah, That's all I'm gonna say. It's moist up yes. there. <laughs> <laughs> what about New Hampshire? All I can say is it squirts. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> No, it's uh, uh, yeah, it's it, it is interesting though, I, I, and I made some good friends, you know, uh, 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 on the road. It's um, yeah, I've had some neat stuff. Uh, every time I go out, it's something different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? but I'm trying to, you know, I, I'm here in L.A. for three months. Uh, I don't have any. I'm I'm, I'm purposely trying not to leave. Uh, yeah. Except I'm leaving soon to go on a couple of tours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to leave, except when I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, in, yes. in two weeks, I'm doing a small California tour. Uh, of my new lecture, the laughter one, yeah, you know? mm-hmm. and then uh, in August I'm doing a, a quick uh, a tour up in Oregon, uh, but I'm trying to stay put for a couple of months, just because I want to do more LA. You know, I want to be I want to be more present here. You know, sure. So, uh, we'll see how long that lasts before I decide to to start going to Vegas. <laughs> he says that now we're going to go hang out at, at a club uh, in, in Venice, and within 30 minutes. <laughs> We'll drive, we'll park, we'll go, dude, I'm leaving for six months. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really? You like you booked that on the four oh five? Son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. Now I, you know I got a speeding ticket. How'd you you booked a tour <laughs> and I got a speeding ticket? Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah that's just how the world works. You know, um uh, so I don't I, I travel uh mostly for work. Uh and now that I've completed the US, I, I love traveling t- for fun too, and, and I try to combine both. But now that I've been everywhere uh, uh, there's very few places that I get excited about when I'm yeah. traveling, you know, like, like, um, uh, uh, so, so do you, I mean, with what you do and, um, number one, if you're doing one of your, uh, one of your presentations, mm-hmm. uh, here or someplace I can get to, I want to come see it because I mean, I've, I've seen your stand up several times and it's always awesome, but I would love to see, hey. uh, one of your actual, one of your lectures, one of those presentations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I well, the one that the one that I've got coming up, uh, that's actually one that I'm going to invite you to. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, because it's it is going to be sort of local. There's, there's one I'm I'm doing one at Universal City, uh, and uh, that's that's a convenient uh, spot for you. The others are parking like, uh, is fucking expensive. Forget it. I'm not going. Yeah, we'll figure something out. Right. Uh, <laughs> but no, um, uh, that's that's the one I'm currently working on. So it's mm-hmm. like I. Uh, on the one hand, yeah, I really want people to come out and stuff. On the other hand, I know it's I know I'm not yet uh, done writing it, so I feel like I, I feel like it's gonna suck. Uh, ah, you know what I mean? My main thing is, is to see it because I know it's gonna be a, a different kind of it's a different venue and it's not yeah. it's not a stand up gig. It may be a performance gig and it may be a funny gig, but it's not the same as being right. you know open mic or a comedy right. club or something. So it's a different thing, and I would love to different see that. Different audience. Yeah. There, there is a you know a notion that I'm teaching, you know, mm-hmm. which is part of it. You know, I have to pretend like I'm teaching stuff. The audience has to pretend like they're learning. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a formality. Uh, We're but, not really taking notes. We're just sketching right. cartoons. This one though is because it's you know the topic is laughter. You know, laughter right. and, and health. Um, I feel like there's a, a lot of uh, flexibility, and I don't have sure. to be. Uh, doing stuff that that looks like teaching for the entire time, like, mm-hmm. if, like I'm actually thinking about opening the seminar with a half hour of stand up, uh, and uh, <laughs> you know, and just kind of doing it because I'm going to talk about jokes and I'm going to talk about what makes things funny and why the brain responds to the things as you know as, as funny, and uh, and so you know, I figure 
it might work, it might not, but I figure I'm going to try to open the show uh, with, a, with a bunch of examples. You know? I, I think it's a great idea. And I, in fact, it's, it, it, it's, um, there's something fearless about it. There's something like, you know what, I'm just going to go bang this out the yeah. way that I think uh, emotionally it feels like the right yeah. way to go. And uh, absolutely. And if, it, if it sucks, uh, I'm only doing it for two weeks. It's not like, it's not like a six-month right. commitment. You know? mm -hmm. uh, now, this idea was proposed to me by the people that, that keep me on the road. And, uh, and we've been tossing this idea for a while uh, about, you know, putting me on the road and just actually literally talking about, you know, humor, you know, and, talk, and making it as entertaining and as funny as possible uh, and still educational so sure. that we can provide, you know, the value to the people that are coming. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. We're going to test it here in California. I'm going to start up north, uh, do a, a bunch of gigs, and then I'm going to come down here and do a week uh, in Southern California. But the only one really in the L.A. area is going to be Universal City. Uh, I'm going to do Pomona, La Jolla, uh, uh, a couple other places, you know, further mm -hmm. out. Uh, but it's just a, uh, it's a it's a test, you know. And, and, and the thing is, is that not a lot of pressure on me, of course, but I want it to be the best it can be. Uh, because at the end of this test run, if it's successful, we're going to record a DVD out of it. Cool. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, make that DVD available for people. Uh, there is, I, I'm starting to get... Uh, there's a lot of interest in buying uh, Dr. Brian King merchandise uh, mm -hmm. when I get on the road. I have nothing. No, to in fact, I saw that the Dr. Brian King, King uh, strap-on is uh, <laughs> that's a good it's one. going through the roof. It's uh, you know, well, they didn't model it after me, right. uh, but I approved it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm Dr. Brian King, and I approve this um, strap-on. Yes, yeah. Yeah. no, that, that's so that's why I can put my name on it and feel good about it. <laughs> no, and that's the whole thing. It's big enough you can actually put your name on it, that's and right. that's it's. Well, That's, I had to write yeah. it like Brian on one side, King on the other. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Because even though it's not modeled after me, it still has to be, you know, I don't want it to hurt anybody. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, when it starts off, it just says Dr. BK. When it's in full force, it says Dr. Yeah. Brian King. That's a good, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. I, uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's all about branding, right? Put your name on as much things yes. as, as you can, you know. Dr. Uh, uh, Brian Crow Lube, uh, I think, is a, is a project product I can see. <laughs> oh, future, that's redundant. You know? Or at least hair gel, <laughs> yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, Brian, the Brian Crowbar, the Grant. right there. You know, you can sell a whole thing of hardware tools. Uh, no, in fact, I've, I actually, I would like to, uh, I'd like to open a bar and call it the Crowbar. Uh, yeah. But I think there's already one that's uh, there's one that, south of Market near uh, near Polk Street. Yeah, no, there was one. Uh, may, might have been the same place. They might they might have moved, but there was on Broadway called the Crowbar, mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco. For everybody who doesn't get these street names, uh, but yeah, it was Broad it was Broadway. Uh, you know, right right Broadway in Columbus. Yep. Uh, the, the crow. I think they 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 closed down. So you saying they moved or or is it a different um, spot? I don't. I've no. I just I remember seeing it going. I was driving my going. Shit, they stole my idea. God yeah. damn it. <laughs> yeah, it is a pretty original idea, mm. I would say. <laughs> well, you know, I get to own no, that. Nobody has ever associated the word bar with the word crow. No, not yeah. ever. Yeah. Uh, no, never happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes, again. Uh, it's all about the branding. <laughs> all right, so I'll tell you, we are actually uh, we are coming up to the end of this uh, illustrious show. Yeah, and get out of here. Yeah, I feel well, like I, no. We are going to get it. In fact, we're going to go. I was. I thought you wanted me to talk about politics and uh, all that we, good stuff. Well, I said we're about <laughs> to get out of here. Um, but uh, before we wrap it up, uh, number one, uh, thank you so much for. Uh, um, in fact, you are. You are actually. So, for the record, uh, Dr. Brian King is the first repeat offender here on uh, formerly American Psycho and now uh, the Eat Crow Show. Oh, you've changed the name. Yeah, That's no, right. it's, it's now Eat Crow. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and this is and this is the this is the season finale. We're gonna take uh, a three month hiatus um, just to just because we can. Um, I think I was on your last season finale too. I feel what, like I feel it? like that sounds familiar Could've to me. No, I don't know. You know, we, I'm like the, the best I, for yeah, last. It's like, it's like you know, it's more like you know. Okay, shit. I guess I'll throw out Brian. Oh, <laughs> <It's, laughs> yeah, busted. That's I'm it. I'm quitting this anyway. Yeah. You know, this is bullshit. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Get get King on here. Just <laughs> get him. A, Somebody, he'll talk a little bit. He'll season say something finale. nice. But yeah, so uh, season finale, and uh, uh, we're going to be coming back uh, in three months with uh, more fun and exciting uh, interviews and stories, and maybe a little more actually, uh, maybe a little more political talk, a little more um, 
news stuff, I don't know, I'm going to take three months, I'm going to meditate on it and sort of find like my oneness and the soulness with inside of myself to see what is the place that I would like to take this show and where it is that spiritually I would like to, what a bunch of bullshit. Is that your meditation voice that you do? <laughs> is that what that yeah, is? No, that's just me wanting to, uh, I would like to, I, I, this is, I haven't had curry in three fucking months and I need a tandoori chicken like a badass. So, yeah. Nice. I, uh, okay, cool. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to say that. That was some hella racist. Uh... <laughs> no, that was it. That was, that wasn't racism. That was, uh, an hey, you honest, know what? I uh, haven't had curry in a while either. Actually, yeah. let's go get some curry. Curry. I, I could murder a fucking curry right now. Oh my God. I can just, uh, I can just murder a homeless person. Uh, well, no, wait, that, I didn't that mean too, to say that out loud. Did. I'm sorry. I was, a. Uh... The nice thing, though, is that it, when you murder a homeless person and then you cover them in curry, I don't know, there's something good about it. I feel like if you murdered a homeless person, that person would be discovered dead sooner than I would if I died in my apartment. <laughs> See, I brought it's it all possible. back. Yeah, I yeah. brought it. And now we're, we're, right now there. We're, we're back to one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... Um, talked about favorite play... Least favorite thing, if there was, I mean, all right, so doing doing the shows, that, the, doing the, the, the talks that you do and doing stand-up, if somebody said, you can't do that anymore, what would be, what would be, the, the, mm. what do you feel to be something that would be insufferable that right. somebody else actually has to do? You, wait, wait, wait. You mean something I wouldn't like to do? Something that you wouldn't like to do, and yet you know that somebody else has to do it. Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm, at, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm at a pretty fortunate uh, point in my life right now. Right, and and like, not from uh, a, not not from a judgmental standpoint. Yeah. Uh, but it's like like oh my god, that is a job that I could just never fucking do. Yeah. I couldn't do that. I think right now anything that involves sitting in a cubicle, you know, right. Like I, I I, I I don't know if I can return to the regular workforce mm-hmm. at this point. Uh, I've, I've been out so long. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's it's tough. So let's take that as an idea. And, and, and what I'm looking for, I'm, I'm, my idea is to sort of move to um, a, a, an up positive sort of close. Is that, okay, so if for you personally, the idea of being stuck in a cubicle would be a horrible thing. Yeah, it'd be awful. Having to like turn you know turn in spreadsheets to managers right. and you know all that yeah you know, yeah horrible. So if you were speaking to somebody one on one that actually had that job, their their day to day job was that very thing that you would find to be intolerable. What might you say to them to give them? a potential sense of optimism that you know what yeah. there's something beyond that what might that be well i say this uh you know first of all um uh there are plenty of people out there that are perfectly happy doing that kind of stuff sure you know? and i knew a lot of them when i used to do it i do uh, too i i wasn't one of those people i was trying really hard uh and if you're you know if you're one of those people and you're stuck in one of those roles and uh and you 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 were extremely unhappy uh you know i i couldn't fit into the corporate world i tried i, I couldn't do it um, I would, I would suggest, uh, you know, that not necessarily, uh, abandon, uh, you know, what you're currently doing, but just start to think about alternatives, start to think about, uh, the things that do make you happy and pursue the things that, that do make you happy more mm-hmm. often. Uh, because, uh, there's, there's two potential outcomes is that one, you'll find something that makes, uh, that not only makes you happy, but also starts to produce or, or uh, some sort of income. You know, it, 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 you know, might like for, for me, for example, you know, I started doing comedy that got me out of the corporate world and now I'm making a pretty good living, uh, as this, uh, comedic public speaker. Um, so you, you might find something like that, but if you don't, uh, you need a release, you know, you need something to, uh, right. you need something to do that, uh, that, you know, you need something to look forward to when, you know, you finish that crummy job, uh, you know, and you're, ah, I can't wait to get off work so I could go whatever it is you have to do, you know, maybe it's collecting stamps or, you know, whatever, but yeah, you just need, you need something to, 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 to bring joy to your life. Uh, if you're in a joyless situation like that, mm-hmm. and I think that's, uh, that's what it comes down to. And that's what I say when I always pursued happiness my entire life. Um, you know, it's, I've been in situations, plenty of situations that didn't make me happy, but I recognized, uh, that I wasn't happy. 
And I recognized that there were some things that I could do to improve my happiness, and I, I didn't uh, postpone pursuing it. You know? Excellent. I don't know if that's the direction you wanted me to take. No, no. <laughs> in fact, that, that, no, that's, that's exactly... Um, you know what? If, if, if there's a message that I would like to, to uh, close this season on is exactly that, actually. And I, I sort of... Uh, I, I thought you would go there. It's part of why I asked. Is that um, this show is going to take a three-month hiatus, and we're going to come back. I have no idea exactly what we're going to do next. Between, but between now and then... Um, everybody that's out there, you know what, um, focus on it and go after what it is that brings you happiness and create some sense of joy, some sense of love and vibrancy in your life. And if it's, if it's exposing your breasts in public, please contact me. Yes, uh, by all <laughs> means. Uh, yeah, no, and f- <laughs> you you can email. Yeah, please contact the station. If that makes you happy, I'll be more than more than happy to help you. Yeah, we're not so. we're not just supportive. <laughs> we're not just fans. We're supportive, and not even from the gr- gravitational standpoint. Physically, we're willing to support. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean seriously, go and just life is fleeting. Yep. Life is fleeting. This the, the there's enough craziness. And chaos in this world and in our lives and just everywhere we turn. So, yeah. you know what? Just go find the places that, that make you happy and give you some sense of, of joy and makes you feel like you're, I don't know, connected with who you really are. Yeah. You know, it's up to you to figure that out. I can't tell you. Nobody can. But uh, go do that. Yeah. And... uh then report back in three months when the show starts up again. Um, Dr. Brian King, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And uh, all of you out there, thank you uh, for uh, your, your listenership and your support. And uh, between now and when, when we can, just uh, as I always say, drive dangerously, take risks, but take care of yourselves and take care of somebody else. And uh, I don't know. Laugh and giggle at least a little bit and, every and learn fucking how to day. Play the guitar. Yeah, learn, learn, and and if you don't contact me, I'll give you lessons, <laughs> and they're cheap too. Uh, I'm Brian Crow. It's Dr. Brian King. This has been Eat Crow. Thank you so much. Good night. I'm a pea, 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 i am a pea 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 i am a p
I'm a P, 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 I'm a P, I'm a P, I'm a P, 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 I'm a P, I'm a P, 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 I'm a P, I'm a P, 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 I'm a P. You know I peed on a preschool playground. You know I gotta go when I hear water drip down. I got pee all over my leg. But I don't care cause I drank half a keg When I pee, I let out my soul That's why I overfilled your toilet bowl I peed off a bridge and I hit a troll I peed down a hole you'd never guess but up popped a mole Yo, 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 where's the urination station at? On car trips, I pee without warning I start at night, go straight through to morning I pee on the government, I pee on drying cement I pee on McDonald's cause I ain't loving it I pee on your mama cause she can't get enough of it I'm a P, I'm a P, I'm a I'm a I'm a P, I'm a P, I'm a P, I'm a I'm a I'm a P, I'm a P, 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 I'm a I'm a P, I'm a P, 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 I'm a I'm a P, I'm a P, 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 I'm a I'm a P, I'm a P, 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 I'm a I'm a P. I'm a P in the middle of the street. I'm a P while rapping to this beat. I'm a P out of case of grape soda. I'm a P on your picture of Yoda. P on me, not you will. Use the pot, you must. I'm a P like an astronaut in space. I'm a P like a horse after the race. I drink coffee by the pot, I don't waste no cups. I'm a P in the back, I'm a P in the front. I'm a P sitting down, cause I like to relax. I'm a P in the run, living life to the max. In high school, I was voted to P the most. I'm a P all over your Facebook post. I'm a go to Pandora, P on a home tree. But I won't P on stage, cause I ain't like Ferg. I'm a P in a box, I'm a P with a fox. I'm a P in a house, I'm a P with a mouse. I'm a P here and there, I'm a P anywhere. I'm a P in your play to green eggs and ham cause I really don't like them will I am I'm a P, I'm a P, I'm a I'm a I'm a P, I'm a P, I'm a P, I'm a I'm a I'm a P, I'm a P, 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 I'm a I'm a P, I'm a P, 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 I'm a I'm a P, I'm a P, 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 I'm a I'm a P, I'm a P, 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 I'm a I'm a P. Manufacturers hate Money goes in All you get is late It's hard living large When your battery won't even hold a charge The shocks gave way about five years back On speed bumps it looks like a trampoline act When they see the inside I have no chance with women The seats are greasier than church's chicken I changed the oil but it got in my hair The body rust looks like shitty underwear Why do you feel a draft in your armpit? Cause you gotta lift the door when you close it Yes the gears grind More than skateboards and bad knees combined with no power, it's hard to steer. Sharp corners will make you want headgear. Yeah, I haven't changed the brakes in a while. Stopping at a light takes a quarter mile. My brakes squeak like a banshee. The pads are weak like instant coffee. The only way to stop is to run into a tree. It's taking more hits than Muhammad Ali. My cars have more abuse than Ike and Tina. The shit so destroyed it was sponsored by FEMA. It's a backfiring brake squeaking oil leaking piece of shit car. It's a backfiring brake squeaking oil leaking piece of shit car. Take a life in your hands when you get into my car. Better have bus fare cause we ain't going very far. Making zero to ten. And just about five, forget being on time. You're lucky to be alive. Holes in the floor, but so you gotta watch your feet. Seat belts don't work if you ain't got a seat. Door doesn't open, window doesn't close. If it rains, you get wet. That's how the story goes. Trunk that shut with rope, bumper held on with tape. If this is your getaway car, you're not gonna escape. Shock shot to hell, and suspension is jack. Can't see shit with the windshield being all cracked. 
driving in the day cause we got no light except the ones in the dash check engine yeah right car don't run on gas it runs on blood sweat and tears so get out and push and i'll work the gears but we're moving right along until we gotta stop transmission shuts off we'll get pulled over by a cop leaking fluids like a snail trail all over town tire so bald my rims are grinding down street legal not exactly this ain't fit for demolition Best I can hope for is a no-fault collision. Bang a door, then a fender, just be sure to have insurance. Cause I'm tired of this shit, it's testing my endurance. So step into my ride if you're in for a thrill. Cause I got no brakes and we're headed downhill. It's a backfiring brake, squeaking, oil leaking, piece of shit car. It's a backfiring brake, squeaking, oil leaking, piece of shit car. Hey man, which one's your whip? See that 2007 Caddy? Yeah. I got the 88 tempo behind it. Say what? Over my windows, you'll find duct tape. It smells like a raccoon that never escaped. Burger wrappers on the floor, and in the trunk, there is a dead whore. Man, I swear my ride is cursed. The damn thing won't go in reverse. I pray for it when I'm at church. God, please let that piece of shit work. The whip brings me shame. You know how they made the frame They beat it with a bat like at a Giants game Fuck the hoopty, it's bringing me pain It's a backfiring brake squeaking Oil leaking piece of shit car It's a backfiring brake squeaking Oil leaking piece of shit car It's a backfiring brake squeaking Oil leaking piece of shit car It's a backfiring brake squeaking Oil leaking piece of shit car Hi, I'm Madam Mim, on the road with Dr. Brian King. I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere. Blues, women, and blues. I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere. I'm an asshole, I'm rude. I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere. Blues, women, and blues. I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere. I'm an asshole, I'm rude. On the road with B, I swear these breezies be He could be the winner of the Killer Labs comedy competition. He's number one on your ballot. Give it up for Brian King. <laughs> Keep you folks entertained. And, uh, and Gail and Sandra, how good were they? Huh? I think it's clear why I started comedy uh, for the pussy. I, uh, <laughs> Gail and I actually have a pact that if one of us wins tonight, uh, we're going to be each other's celebratory fuck. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of hoping I don't win. I don't know. <laughs> to food. This is fucked up. Uh, this, that's how you heckle a fat man. Uh, you have an unfinished plate on your... Did your mom teach you to finish your fucking plate? Like that, that food looks good to me. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hungry, I tell you. And it is true that we do kind of have like a bald thing up front. That's uh, <laughs> We got every variety of bald, man. I mean, we, got, uh, we got Bruce Willis bald, uh, Telly Savalas bald, uh, and Larry David bald. <laughs> Larry David Ball if he wasn't shaving. So I, uh, I get, you guys are all jealous of me, aren't you? you guys, uh, I knew it. I grew it out, man. I figured you had to, you had to grow it out one last time. You know? And, uh, it looks like shit, I know, but it's mine. Fuck you. You know what I mean? Look at that, man. You got half a head, man. What the hell, man? Most of it's on your face. I don't know. Uh, I, I like you sitting there with your arms crossed, like showing off the biceps. I get it. You can kick my ass. I understand. Okay? Uh, I'm not gonna mess with you, man. I'm, uh, I'm fear. I'm scared of you, actually. My, my balls just went up in my body uh, as I saw you do that. I, I'm a 
limp, man. I'm a big guy, and I'm a limp, man. I've never been in a fight before, is what I'm saying. Like, if we were, if I were to find myself in prison for whatever reason, and I, they, they introduced me to my cell, and I saw a guy like you in there, I'd be like, okay, go ahead. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sucking dick that really 
just burns the calories. They just come right off. You know? Maybe that's why my girlfriend is putting on weight before we go home. I don't know. You get it, she wouldn't fuck her. That's plain and simple. So, how many of you guys came out here specifically for this show, and how many of you are here because Outback had too long of a wait? Be honest with me, alright? No, Outback Steakhouse, they're next door. I don't, I don't like that restaurant very, uh, very much, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I went there recently, I had a bad experience. They build it as the Australian Steakhouse. Well, it's Australian, you know? And I go in, that's not a damn thing Australian in that menu, okay? I was looking for like some kangaroo meat, you know? Uh, an emu burger, some platypus strips, you know, something. Koala, yeah, I forgot to say that. All right, you know, those are all Australian animals, you know, midnight oil. And, uh, nothing, man, nothing. They have this slogan on their menu, it says, no rules, just right. I'm like, oh yeah, no rules? I don't know, pay for this dinner, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna wear pants. <laughs> I want you to wear pants. Let's make this a party. You know what I mean? No rules, man. That's a dumb slogan, folks. They should change that. Steakhouse, Australia for Applebee's. Fuck you, John. That's my punchline. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank It's the Hollywood Rock and Wrap Up with your host, Jason Hadley. Actor Henry Winkler tells reporters he wants to change his name after discovering the Winkler is slang for a lewd sex act according to UrbanDictionary.com. Now, if Henry needs any advice on dealing with his name being a sex act, he should call any of the five women I just found searching the name Connie Lingus. Sad news is James Harness, star of the Discovery Channel show Gold Rush, passed away at the age of 57. With a memorial plan for this weekend, the only person looking forward to the service is the priest who can't wait to be in a room full of minors. Now that he's divorcing vegetarian Gwyneth Paltrow, Coldplay's Chris Martin told BBC Radio he's back to eating meat. While this may sadden pro-vegan groups, Martin's being welcomed with open arms by humans for the unapologetic mastication of meat until satisfied, otherwise known as PETA's direct competitor, hummus. And that's the Hollywood Rock and Wrap Up. Happy birthday, America, and to all our listeners and affiliates, have a happy 4th of July. And as always, follow us on Twitter at Rock and Wrap Up. Thank you for joining us on our weekly Friday lineup of original shows. We now return you to our regular scheduled programming. Stay tuned to Excite Radio for the best in original music. Don't forget, if you missed a show or want to subscribe to our iTunes podcast, just visit iTunes and search Excite Radio or your favorite shows. Until next week, keep on rocking.